Hello, my name is Olive Oatman. However, I am also known by another name. During my time living with the Mojave tribe, I was given the name Cloud Woman. I am here to share my remarkable story of survival and adaptation in the face of adversity. As a young girl, I was taken captive by Native Americans. My journey from captivity to liberation was nothing short of miraculous, and I am honored to tell my story here. This photograph of Olive Oatman speaks volumes, embodying the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. Born in 1837, her story is truly remarkable, beginning in 1850 when she and her family journeyed on a wagon train heading west from Illinois to California. Tragically, their trip was interrupted when the Oatmans struck out on their own and were ambushed by a group of Yavapai Indians demanding their guns, food, and provisions. The brutal attack claimed the lives of six family members, leaving only Olive, her sister Marianne, and her brother Lorenzo, who was beaten and left for dead but managed to seek help. Olive and Marianne were abducted and taken to a Yavapai village where they were forced into slavery, enduring a harrowing ordeal. After about a year, a group of Mojaves led by Chief Espanoli arrived to trade with the Yavapais. The chief's daughter, Topeka, witnessed the ill treatment of the girls and proposed to trade for them. The Yavapais initially declined, but Topeka persisted, eventually trading two horses, a few vegetables, a few pounds of beads, and three blankets for them. The sisters walked for many days to reach the Mojave village, which is located in present-day Needles, California. Espanola's wife, Espaneo, and Topeka treated them like family, and Olive expressed her deep gratitude and affection for the two women throughout her life. Upon being adopted into the Mojave chief's family, my sister and I were embraced as his own children and treated with utmost care and love, as I recall. As was customary for all Mojave women, Marianne and I received striking blue tattoos on our chins to ensure our happiness in the afterlife and solidify our belonging within the tribe. We learned to speak their language and adopted their customs as our own. I had a new family to love and take care of me. This became my new life, and I was happy. One year following their captivity, a famine devastated the Mojave tribe, and ten-year-old Marianne Oatman died of starvation. We were all overwhelmed with grief when Marianne died. I remember hearing Espanio as she wept and wept from the heart, and aloud, for a whole night. Olive Oatman lived with the Mojave people for four years and became fully assimilated into their culture. In 1854, when white railroad surveyors visited the tribe's camp, Olive and Marianne chose not to reveal themselves, choosing instead to stay with the Mojave. In 1856, five years after the devastating ambush, authorities from Fort Yuma, California were able to locate Olive and demanded she be returned. Initially, the Mojave resisted, denying that Olive was white, but eventually agreed to relinquish her and negotiated her exchange, offering a white horse, four blankets, and six pounds of white beads. Despite her reluctance, Olive agreed to make the more than 20-day journey to Fort Yuma to be reintegrated into white society. Olive Oatman was reunited with her brother Lorenzo, who she thought had died. The media coverage of their reunion captured the nation's attention. Many were enthralled by the story of Olive's release from captivity. During interviews with the press, Olive Oatman spoke about the generosity of the Mojave people and refuted allegations of any mistreatment during her captivity. A book was written about her story which earned her and her brother enough money to pursue their education at the University of the Pacific. Olive's strikingly tattooed chin made her a curiosity, and people came to hear her story and witness the jagged blue tattoo for themselves. As the first known white American woman with a tattoo, she gained national attention and became one of the earliest female public speakers, traveling across the United States lecturing about her experience and sharing the traditions and way of life of the Mojave people while advocating for better treatment of Native Americans. In 1865, Olive married John Fairchild, a cattleman and banker who protected her from public scrutiny. He too had lost his brother to an attack by Native Americans. Olive settled into domestic life, and after a decade of marriage, they adopted a baby girl, Mary Elizabeth, fondly nicknamed Mamie. Even with living the life of an ordinary southern white woman in Sherman, Texas, Olive never fully shed her adopted culture. 
She kept a jar of hazelnuts, a staple Mojave food, in her kitchen and retained some of the customs and traditions she had learned while living among the Mojave people. To honor Olive, the town of Oatman, Arizona, was established in her memory. The passing of her brother Lorenzo in 1901 was a great loss for Olive. Two years later, at the age of 65, she herself passed away due to heart failure. Despite being largely forgotten by mainstream white America, the story of Olive Oatman, known to the Mojave Indians as Cloud Woman, continued to be passed down through their tribe. Living among both the Mojave Indians and pioneers showed me that they shared strengths and values, such as resilience in their harsh environments, valuing family and community, and a deep connection to the land as a source of life. Despite their differences, I appreciated the commonalities that brought us together and feel grateful for the lessons and experiences I received from both cultures.